to Children's Church at Home. And today, Miss Frances has a wonderful lesson for us about Zacchaeus, just like the song. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. So, maybe you guys know that song, maybe you don't. Um, but she has this awesome video prepared for us, and we would love it if you guys drew some pictures for us, because I don't think we got any from last week, which is a real bummer. So, draw pictures and enjoy the lesson. Hi everyone, my name is Miss Wanda, and uh, I have a story to share with you today. Uh, it's a story from the Bible in Luke chapter 19, and it's a story about a man named Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus and I have some things in common, and um, you might have some things in common with Zacchaeus too. So let me tell you the story, and, uh, and then we uh, can talk about Zacchaeus. So Zacchaeus, uh, uh, there's some things that uh, were unique about him. Uh, one is that he was very rich. And the reason he was rich is because he was a tax collector. And tax collectors took money from the people and gave it to the Roman government. But Zacchaeus was very rich because he took extra money from the people and kept it for himself. And because of that, the people did not like Zacchaeus very much. And then another thing about Zacchaeus that's, un that's unique is that he was very short. And uh, that wasn't his fault. He was born that way. God made him short. And then the third thing about Zacchaeus that I can relate to is that he was very curious. So let's hear the story. So Zacchaeus had heard that Jesus was going to be coming through his town on the way to Jerusalem. And Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus because he had heard uh, stories about Jesus, that Jesus did miracles, that he healed people, um, and uh, that uh, people's uh, lives were changed because of Jesus. And that made Zacchaeus curious. So he decided he wanted to see this Zacchaeus too as he passed through the town. So um, he went out with the crowd and waiting to see Jesus pass by, but he realized he was so short, he wouldn't be able to see Jesus. So he turned around and he saw this big tree, and it was a sycamore tree. And so he climbed up into that sycamore tree so that he could see Jesus as he passed by. And so here comes Jesus. The crowd got excited, and Zacchaeus watched Jesus begin to walk by, but Jesus surprised him. He stopped at the bottom of the sycamore tree, and he looked up, and he said, Zacchaeus, come on down right now, because I'm going to your house today. And Zacchaeus was shocked, uh, but he was also excited that Jesus would want to come to his house. So he came down out of the tree, and he took Jesus to his house. And uh, his family fixed dinner for Jesus. So they had dinner together, and Jesus began to tell him stories. And as Jesus spoke to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus uh, became very convicted about some of the bad things he did, stealing from people and, and, uh, and hurting people. And so he said to Jesus, You know, I really feel bad for what I've done. So I'm going to take all of the money that I have stolen from people, and I'm going to give it back to them. And not only that, I'm going to take half of all of the money that I have, everything I own, and I'm going to give it to the poor. Well, Jesus looked at Zacchaeus, and he said, Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to your house. Can you imagine how that made Zacchaeus feel? Well, I have to tell you, uh, I can relate to Zacchaeus because when I was a little girl, very little, we didn't go to church except on Easter and Sunday. And I thought it was kind of neat because they always gave you oranges and candy. And I thought, wow, there's something, must be something neat about this. And I didn't know who Jesus was other than I had heard his name. And um, when I was about four years old, we went to visit our cousins and to play with them and while the, while the parents visited. And uh, they had this great big jar of pennies. And I was so curious about these pennies. I thought, wow, never seen so many pennies. I wish I could have some of them, just a few. And nobody will notice. 
So while everyone was playing, I put my hand in that jar and I took a handful of pennies and I put them in my pocket. So when we were going home and I was getting into the car, my pocket started to jingle and some of the pennies fell out. And my mom and dad looked down and they said, Wanda, where did you get those pennies? And you know, I just couldn't lie to my parents. And I said, well, my cousins had a jar full of pennies and I took a handful. And my dad says, Wanda, you have to take those back right now. So he took me back into the house. I gave my cousins back their pennies and I told them I was sorry. And you know what? I was glad I did because after I took those pennies, I felt kind of guilty. I didn't know why, but I did. So I was glad I gave the pennies back. I was kind of embarrassed, but I gave the pennies back. And you know, when I was, that was when I was about four. So when I was about six, my friend invited me to vacation Bible school. I didn't know what that was, uh, but I was curious. And it was summertime, it was something to do. So I went to vacation Bible school with my friend Carol. And in vacation Bible school, they taught us about Jesus. They told stories, how much he loved people, even though they were sinners, even though they did bad things, and how he forgave them, and how he came into their life. And you know what? Uh, That made my heart so happy that Jesus loved uh, people so much, even though they did bad things sometimes. So I wanted Jesus to come into my heart. And so at Vacation Bible School, when I was six years old, I asked God to forgive me of my sins, and I asked Jesus to come into my heart. And, you know, he did that very day. And he's been in my heart ever since. He's never left, even though there's times when I've done things that I shouldn't do. When I have sinned and I've hurt people, and but I always, as much as I can, can remember and try to. I always ask God to forgive me, and He always does. It's such a beautiful thing. And so because of that, I can relate to Zacchaeus. I love that story. And today, uh, I'd like to pray with you. And uh, some of you already know Jesus, and you know He lives in your heart, and you know that He loves you, and He forgives you when you do things you shouldn't. And uh, But there might be some of you that haven't asked Jesus into your heart yet. And if that's the case, you can do it right now with me. So let's go ahead and uh, pray together and uh, just have a little visit with Jesus. Dear Jesus, we just pray to you today. We, and we ask you, God, um, to forgive us for the things we've done that have uh, hurt your heart. Maybe we've lied or maybe we've taken something we shouldn't. Maybe we've um, disobeyed our parents. Um, Maybe we've hurt someone's feelings. Maybe we've said a bad word. Well, for all of those things, God, whatever it is, we ask you to forgive us. And then, Lord, we ask you to come into our heart today. Mm. We thank you, God, that uh, you loved us enough that you sent Jesus into this world into the world and to die on the cross for our sins so that so that we can ask him to come into our heart and that we can live forever knowing that he loves us knowing that you love us God and that you'll be with us all the rest of our life even into eternity and we ask all this in your name Jesus amen oh what a wonderful thing to know that Just a simple prayer like that can change our life forever. And I'm so thankful that we got to have this time together. And I look forward to seeing uh, you when we can get back together uh, in the church. And uh, otherwise, I just hope you have a glorious day. I know I will. Bye. Thanks, Wanda. That was really great. Um, So now I have some questions for you guys. I only have two questions today. The first one is, why do you think Jesus wanted to have lunch with Zacchaeus? The second question is, what do you think changed in in Zacchaeus because of that? Now go ahead and discuss that with your family.
Now, we don't have any pictures to show you from last week, sadly, um, but I hope we get some next week. And now, um, we have a memory verse from Sarah, and she did a really great job, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Hi, kids. My name is Sarah, and I am super excited. I get to do your guys' memory verse for today. This is one of my favorite verses. It's Ephesians 2.8, and it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves, it is the free gift of God. Now, I really like this verse because, to be honest, I'm a sinner. I make mistakes, and I've broken God's rules more than once. And, well, God is perfect. And in order to live with Him, that means I have to be perfect. But I'm not which means I can't be in heaven with God. And it also means that I deserve death, which is kind of scary to think about. But there's good news. Jesus loves us so much, more than we could ever imagine. Like, it's, it's crazy. Like, no one on this earth can ever be able to understand how great God's love is for us. But God demonstrated that love by sending Jesus to this earth. He lived a perfect life. He didn't break any of God's rules, not even a little bit. And he died on the cross for our sins. And when he did that, he paid the price that we deserved that I deserve. I should have been the one on that cross, but Jesus took that for me. And he, he paid for me to get into heaven. And he's giving that to me as a free gift. It's called grace. He's saying, here, I'm giving you salvation. You don't deserve it. But I love you, and I don't want to be in heaven without you. So here's my grace. All you have to do is just accept it. That's why this verse says, not of yourselves. This means that we don't get to heaven by our works. Like being a good person, or going to church every Sunday, or reading our Bible every day. Those are all good things. But it's not what gets us into heaven. It's His grace that we don't deserve. So let's go over this verse again. It's Ephesians 2.8. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the free gift of God. I'll say it one more time. Ephesians 2.8. For by grace are you saved through faith not of yourselves it is the free gift of god okay you try saying it with me this time i'll go slow ready here we go for by grace are you saved through faith not of yourselves it is the free gift of god let's try it one more time Ready? For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the free gift of God. Now, how about you try it on your own? Okay? I'll give you some time. Ready? Go. Did you get it? Awesome. Well, keep practicing and all in on a prayer for you guys. Dear God, I thank you for all of these kids. I ask that you would just be with them and show them your amazing love. And also show them that they are saved by your grace and even though we all mess up sometimes, 
your grace covers it. And all we have to do is accept that free gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, bye guys! Thanks, Sarah. That was really great, and I love that verse. Um, so now, i just like to remind you guys that every weekday I am reading Narnia on a Zoom call, and we have the link up every day on the Facebook page, and it's been a lot of fun, and we're almost done with the whole series. We have like two more books left, so feel free to join us for that. It's a lot of fun, and um, have a great week. I love you all. I miss you. Um, goodbye. <laughs>